Well, speaking of lingo, there's plenty flying around on Twitter over the weekend. I saw you both getting involved. The new tackle limits. Madness. Absolute madness. I had a bit of time to digest it, and I actually Googled like a human body map, like a diagram, a diagram, not a map. It's a map or a diagram uh, of head, shoulders, knees, knees and, and toes, toes, knees, knees and, toes. and toes. And many people, I think, in all this discussion, are hearing the news and reading the news and absorbing the news on social media that the RFU are reducing the tackle height to the waist. You're a good man to talk about this. The waist is actually higher than you think, Andrew. They're talking about. I I know where you're coming from here, but this is. Are you, are you employed by the RFU PR machine to try and <laughs> no. change the narrative here? No. They've had a shocker. They've, they've had, had a, shocker. a shocker. They've also had a shocker. But look, I think it's our responsibility because a lot of people listening to this will be part of the grassroots fraternity in the community. Probably the majority of our listeners are from that group. So I think one can be emotion led, but I think also we need to deliver them details. So it's not hips, it's waist right? So I went one further. So there was that part of me where I thought, okay, well, it's not as low as I thought because the hips are lower than the waist and the waist is only a couple of inches lower than the nipples unless you goody when actually the nipples are lower than the waist. <laughs> and then people are sending me this clip from YouTube of Federal 3 of the rules being or the laws being implemented. And that's where I was like, my, good, my goodness me. I don't know whether because the, the game was so bad. But it was actually quite comical watching some of the players, some of the lads going into tackle with their hands because effectively they can't they, don't, they can't get that low. So that was what I wanted to say on that point, Goody, and you can probably go into your point and then we can have a conversation around it. But I think a few days have gone past and, I, I, again, just trying to sit on it a little bit more. I don't think it is as radical as people are making out, albeit... Albeit it could payroll. be. I'll tell you now, I'm not, mate. I'm not. But let's go through it. Like, I don't agree with it. Let, let me just start by saying, that, and this is where people disagree because they think it will come to the top end of rugby. This ain't happening, in my opinion. I'll eat my head if it does. I don't you'll think eat, You'll that eat this, your head? Well, How are you exactly. going to eat your head? Because no, your mouth's on your head. No, I'll eat it. I'll eat my head. I'll but eat how it. How are you going to eat your head? Well, I'm not, am I? Because it ain't going to happen. So that's, it. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. This ain't coming. I can't see it. To the, for, to the top of the game. It can't. And there's a number of reasons why that we can get into, but it's definitely happening. They're doing it in France. They're doing it in New Zealand. The RFU have announced it. SRU are going to announce the same. WRU and the RFU, unless they listen to Johnny Sexton, they'll probably change their minds because he's the king. Uh, but this is coming, whether we like it or not. Yeah, the thought behind it. Now, I get the idea of trying to lower the tackle height, and I talk about it on here, to make the game safer. Completely... Understand it. At the minute, the laws state that it's below the neckline, isn't it? So shoulders and neckline, that's where the, you know it's a high tackle if it's deemed above that. Now, so to bring the the target aim down it is fully understandable. So I get the premise behind it. The way the RFU have done it, let's deal with that first. The way they've done it with their press release saying, all right, from July 2023, the new laws will state that you must everyone in the grassroots game must tackle below the waist, right? So everyone's like shorts, that's below the shorts. You're changing the game radically and you're saying it from national one down. So it's not the premiership and it's not the championship. This is just in England. So for all our listeners in other countries, in other leagues, you know, we're just talking about England now. You've got, first and foremost, you've got players at premiership clubs that are on loan at championship clubs and national one clubs. So you have got players that are going to have to play both games, which is ridiculous. Um, secondly, you've, there's no consultation, and this isn't any order of priority, but there's been no consultation. I've had so many messages on social media. I've got mates that play at Windsor Rugby Club, Beaconsfield Rugby Club, loads of different clubs around the country who are all messaging me going, this is going to kill the game. Like, who wants to play that game? It's, it's very different to what you watch on TV. Um, and in terms of how they've announced it, they've not given any serious guidelines that they did a second sort of PR announcement by then saying we'll come, you know, we'll, we'll give more information in a few weeks time around how it's structured, how, you know, it's refereed, et cetera, et cetera. If you're going to radicalize the game that much and do a pe press release, and I don't know whether they were forced into something around, you know, the, the legal battles that are going on behind closed doors. Um, I don't know whether they were trying to change the narrative around getting away from Eddie Jones. I don't know whether Bill Sweeney's woken up and just gone, Oh, let's do something because, uh, I'm awake now, the sleeping bag's got a bit sweaty and I, I decided to wake myself up. But the whole process of it, how they've announced it, shocking. 
there's been little consultation, if any, to the majority of the people that this is going to affect. So you go to the the grassroots clubs, the players are like, who's voted for this? Who said this is a good idea? Who's been consulted on this in terms of the levels that are going to be affected? So they're taking a top tier view of this is what we're going to do to change the game without any consultation. Um, and I personally believe, yes, it's going to come in. You have to change something to change behaviours, to make it safer, et cetera, et cetera. And my argument was in my column, if it's at shoulder line, neckline now in terms of where a high tackle is and you want to get to even lower, then start off with the nipples. You know, they tried it in the Championship Rugby Cup a few years ago. MLR. Yeah, start at nipple line or chest line. And I've joked on here, but if it is the case, if that is the case, I'll come out because my nipples are around my knees and I want to be able to tackle me. But <laughs> I don't literally mean it. But you know what I mean? It's, you're sat there and you're thinking, who's thought of this? And you, you know, there's loads of science and research behind it. Well, who follows science now? Who follows science and data? Don't don't get political. Let's not do it. But let's do it. <laughs> there we go. Follow the science. Got what? And, and then you're sat there going, of all the people it's affected, hardly anyone, if anyone, has been consulted on it. So, the actual game in in England, the club game, the grassroots game in England, is on its knees in terms of since the pandemic. The RFU had this big drive to try and get players to come back to their clubs because a lot of the clubs have struggled to get players coming back to play because they got used to not playing rugby for a season because of the pandemic. And then they thought, well, actually, do I need to batter my body? Do I want you know, to go through what I used to go through without even thinking about on a Tuesday night, Thursday night, play on a Saturday? People, People's lives changed. So it was harder for them to get everyone to go back to play rugby. So participation levels were down. Um, and off the back of it, you know, I go and do after dinner speeches up and down the country at all these grassroots rugby clubs and I enjoy doing it but part of them is you go into them and they'll every I guarantee every time I'm at a club someone will go oh he's our Andy Gude and they'll point at some fat bloke with his nipples around his knees because they're they're comparing themselves to ex-professionals or professional players and then there'll be another one go oh there's he's our Owen Farrell but what you're doing is you're making two separate games now by doing that so you're making a game for the grassroots and then you're wanting them to all be involved and watch the professional game for the championship and the premiership. Are you stopping a team from the grassroots from coming up the leagues because it's then a different game in between two leagues, the Nat 1, Nat 2, the championship, so that you might be blocking that pathway? It's so radical in everything they've done and it's a PR disaster. So whoever is their PR team that's advised them to do this is either a knee-jerk reaction because... There's something at play behind closed doors around the legal battles, or again, it's just clueless leadership from the RFU. And um, you know, we're in this place now where everyone's debating it. No one really knows what it entails. You've got Nigel Owens coming out and saying it's going to be hard on the referee. How's a referee going to referee this? The game's hard enough to referee anyway, and half of them can't get it right at the top level. Let alone imagine some of the refs in the in the grassroots. And that's what people say to me when I'm doing after the speeches around the country. And I, I moan about some of the refs and we talk about GMO, Goody, Match Official and all that stuff. They, they're they all laughing about some of the refs at the lower end. So how are you making their job even harder? Um, I get the premise of it. How they've handled it is horrific. And, you know, I think it will kill the game at the grassroots level over time in England. Pod, 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 pod. Rugby pod.